Well, hello everybody. Welcome to this interview. Today I have Claude Diamond on the line with us. The man, the myth, the legend of God Sales Method. Um, and um, you know, Claude is, a, is an extraordinary real estate investor. He's been a veteran, been doing this for over 30 years. And I'm only 30, and I'm only 36. How do you go? Yes, and that? he's only 36. So he's, <laughs> yeah, he started this first grade, started investing. Kindergarten. Uh, kindergarten. In, in the womb. <laughs> I was negotiating umbilical cord. Yes, no kidding. Uh, but oh, you know, funny, funny story, Claude. So when you started real estate investing thirty years ago, that means that I just came here to the United States. What took you uh, so long? Uh, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, uh, so so I've been here for thirty years. So that's that's a that's a really cool thing. So so you know, Claude specialized in. Um, sales and marketing. So he teaches his students a lot about sales and negotiations, uh, which is something that uh, is missing in a lot of real estate courses out there. You know, a lot of real estate courses teach you how to find the deals, how to, you know, um, get in a contract, how to sell it, how to rehab it. Uh, but the big part of it all, like after you can have a thousand leads, right? But if you don't have a way to convert those leads, you're just throwing, you know, just throwing money down the drain. And so uh, really glad to have Claude on the line with us today. Claude, welcome, buddy. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for inviting me to uh, beautiful Texas, right? Yes, Houston, Texas. Yeah, I'm in beautiful San Diego, California. It's 75 degrees out here. After I'm done with this, we can go out and get some fish tacos and go surfing, okay? <laughs> That sounds good. I was All in right. San Diego just a few weeks ago, but um, awesome. So, so Claude, let's get right into it. So, share with us. You know, um, how did you get started investing? You know, so long ago. Uh, what got you uh, curious? And then, you know, what got you to focus in on sales and marketing the most um, in in your business? Yeah, I had a corporate job, which uh, I was li uh, living in New York City and then New Jersey, and I had a corporate job, um, you know, which um, I didn't like work. I don't play nice with others. I I basically <laughs> wanted to have my own business, and um, I read some books like uh, Robert Allen, Nothing Down. Um, his latest book is Nothing Left, I believe. Um, <laughs> um, um, and then uh, Mark Haraldson, Financial Freedom Report. And, um, oh gosh, what was the name of that one book uh, from the fella? He wrote, How I Turned 5000 into $5 million. I read all these real estate books. Then I did what most people do. I started going to the seminars, same ones 30 years ago, the same ones today, okay? And I heard the stories of people making a lot of money, and I had real estate fever. And mm. you know what real estate fever is? That's when you walk into a room of your friends, and they go the other way, because they know all <laughs> you're going to do is bore them to death of talking about real estate. So I bought a few properties. I ran up my credit cards. This was all the advice I got. And yep. I, I basically uh, was going very slowly broke with negative income, bad tenants, evictions, <coughs> all kinds of things. And uh, But I really wanted to, I loved real estate and I knew some people were making it in there. And um, I had to find out, I had to find somebody who was doing it. And I heard of this man, I've talked about him in a lot of my books and and stuff. I wrote a, a couple books, The uh, Gut Sales Method and The Mentor Teaches uh, Success. These are free to your anybody who's listening, by the way. Just send me an email. I'll send you my books for free. Um, awesome. I always send stuff for free. It, it tr gives me attention, which is about marketing. I met this wonderful man named Max, and he would pick, and I, he did something I've never seen anyone ever do before. He, in the first, he would close people in one phone call in real estate. And he would make more money on that one phone call than I would make in a whole year at my wow. cor at my corporate job with my three piece suit and my commuting and sitting in traffic. And that's what I wanted to do. So I ended up interning for him, fetching mm -hmm. him coffee and stuff. I wanted to be around, you know, and the takeaway is if you want to be a millionaire, hang around with one. Right. Learn from them, ask them, but make sure they're a legitimate uh, a millionaire, not a bullshit guru. OK, I'm really big. Uh, can I use bad language? I'm sorry. <laughs> You um, can. <laughs> I, I just like to say it like straight. I'll try not to be too profane. but And so I learned from this man how to give good phone, like my sign says back there, um, I, how to talk to, how to speak to people. I mean, he was doing lease purchasing options, which I love. There's many strategies. 
and they're all about leverage. And that was fine. I learned all those different strategies. And uh, but then I, I sucked at sales. Uh, Tim, mm. I was the for I'm the former world's worst salesman. I couldn't give away money. Uh, I was horrible at sales. I was embarrassed. Uh, I was humiliated. I hated the rejection. And when something is not comfortable, not fun, and you're not making money, you don't do it anymore. Right. You know, I'll go clean the toilet or something like that. that and, that's funny. That's funny. You mentioned that because I, I was going to ask you, like, I've, you know, I've always thought of sales as kind of like a an instinctive skill, right? It's, it, you know, it comes with hustling. It comes with being on the street sometimes. <laughs> but, I'm, you know, to, for you to say, so I, I imagine you as like a born salesperson. But for you to say that, you know, you will, yeah, bad at sales. That's a... Uh, I was horrible at sales. Uh, um, yeah. I was very shy then. It's hard to believe. Um, but, uh, it, you know, there's two kinds of people. There's the natural born people who are more extroverted, more outgoing, they're confident. I wanted to be like them, but it was hard because when you pick up the phone in real estate, why do most people fail? You and I are both in this business and I meet wonderful people, intelligent people. Uh, they study the materials. They know my materials better than me. Oh, Claude, on page 37, you said that. I said, what's on page 37? I wrote it two years ago. You know, and they are so working so hard. And then they go out there with all this motivation and they just want to help their families and pay off some bills. And they go out there and uh, they spend too much money on marketing and, and mailers and things like that. Don't ask me about mailers if you're a big uh, mailer fan, by the way. Um, <laughs> and th then they get on the phone and that's where it falls apart because we all get inundated by telemarketers and, and commercial mailers and stuff. And what most people do since they're used to it, they, they get it all the time, Tim. They ignore him, they hang up on the phone, they're rude to them, they reject them. Nobody wants to stop their whole day and just answer a bunch of questions to, an, to a, a new investor or even a seasoned one. Oh, hi, I'm just reaching out to you. I'd like to ask you about your house today. Do you have five minutes to answer some questions? No, click. <laughs> and if that happens, to, I'm sensitive. I cry at Disney movies, okay? And, and I, when I get that kind of rejection, I can't do that every day. Yeah. And that's why people fail in this business. If you have to find one reason why people fail, why there's one percent of people who make unbelievable amounts of money. They make all the money in the world because they can get they can do this one thing. They can give good phone. They know they understand the psychology of the of the people they're negotiating with. And until you master the art and science of persuasion and influence, you are I'm, you're doomed to fail. Man, I'm like the uh, ant opposite Anthony Robbins here. I'm like a demotivational speaker. Uh, you, you've got you've to gotta know how to talk to people so they say, hey, I, I like Tim. Uh, maybe Tim can help me. Maybe I, maybe I found a straight guy in an unstraight world. Maybe, maybe this is finally the guy I should do a deal with. You know, They feel different about you. They respect you like they would a professional. Like gotcha. another, but we don't act like professionals and we're not taught to act like professionals. We're taught to, we're taught to read scripts. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller. How are you today? I would. And when they get that script, that script is the death of success. So all you people out there, I hope you don't, you don't write scripts. Do you, Tim? I don't. Okay, <laughs> good, good. Cause if anybody who's got a script, put it in your shredder because it's, It'll be better for stuffing another pack, your next postal mailer than it will be useful in your sales. You've got to be original, creative. You've got to ask the questions the right way to people so that they want to get emotionally involved and they want to do deals with you. And if mm -hmm. you can do that, you can have fun. On the, I'm the only guy who says fun in real estate. I have a lot of fun. I love talking to people. I love asking. I don't do deals with everybody, but if I have a a mature conversations, adult to adult conversations with people. Occasionally someone says yes. And that keeps Mrs. Diamond very happy. <laughs> okay. You know no. how to make, you know how to, are you married, Tim? I am. Yes. You know how, do you know how to have the best marriage in the world? <laughs> Bring home the bacon. <laughs> make a shitload of money. Yes. Bring home the bacon. Very good. <laughs> um, so, so Claude, you know, you not using scripts, do you at least have like sort of uh, 
bullet points or main main points that you want to get out of that call how do you teach someone so that, i guess it's a two-part question so like do you have some kind of bullets in mind uh you know formula in mind um how do you teach a new investor not knowing a thing about real estate how would they know what to say if they don't use a script they have to get certain part information but before they do we have a system it's three little steps like a staircase First one is agenda. The next step as you rise up, the staircase of success is qualification. And the third one is close. The agenda is basically where you introduce yourself and don't sound like a jerk. You don't sound like a clown. You would say something, you would basically say, hi, Tim, you got a problem. Uh, that property is back on the market. I might be able to help you today. My name's Claude Diamond. I do deals very quickly. Yeah, you mind if, can I ask you one or two quick questions and see if we can do business today? And then uh, if we can, great. If not, you can fire me. Is that all right? Would you like to make some money today? Would you like a contract today? Boom. And, and that's an agenda where basically we're getting permission to ask questions. We're telling them up front to fire us if it's not right. We don't have to say, I'll think about it. I'll get back to you. I'm going to talk to my spouse, my wife, or, or whatever. We just get rid of that. Then we go to the qualification. And this is an outline that they, uh, we teach people. They study it. We have the materials. And they put it in their head. And they practice. You know how you, you, know how you get good at sales? You practice. You practice with um, my students practice with each other. We have a meeting every Monday. We practice. I do private calls. We practice. And then I make phone calls every day. I have a, another rule called the rule of five where you got to speak to five new people a day follow up with five new people, leave five voicemails a day, do five social media marketing a day, and make five offers a day if you can. If you can do the rule of five and use the guts three-step system, you're going, to find, you're going to find that this is an enjoyable business and you're going to learn while you're speaking to people. There's, everybody wants to cross every T and dot in the, every I, and it's impossible. There's too, much, there's too much variety. There's too many different strategies and things. The way you get good at this business is you do it. You may, and my job is to make people so comfortable that they pick up that phone and speak to enough people every day. Now, the second step of the qualification is they need, they need to know the, the, what's the problem, first of all. Okay, why are they selling a home? Why do they want to buy a home? Why do they want to invest? And we're looking for what we call the EQ, the emotional quotient. So we ask questions in a certain way to find out, uh, is it a financial problem? Is it a divorce, a family health issue, a job transfer? Then we want to find out the time, the time issue. Um, when do they, um, do they need to sell it now or buy a house now or six months from now? We want to find out the money question. When should we talk about money, Tim? In the beginning, in the middle, or the end of a conversation? Uh, I mean, I, I would say in the middle. In the beginning, right up front. Beginning. Tim, if I can help you, role play with me. Tim, if, if I can help you and your lovely family get into a nice house in San Antonio, you're, you're in Houston, a nice right. home in Houston, okay, that meets with your budget, with the down payment or the option money and the money per rent. Is that something you'd be comfortable making a commitment for today? Gotcha. Okay. How much would your budget allow you to put down as a commitment on this $300,000 home? Because we need some kind of commitment. What's, what's comfortable for you today, Tim? Um, 30,000. Uh, we got a problem. I was looking for 35. Oh, what are we going to do, Tim? Um, well, I mean, I can try to see if I can come up with the, the, the other five. But let me, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, if we were, if there was a way I could financially arrange where the 30 down and then we spread the five out over a year on top of the rent, that wouldn't make a difference, would it? Uh, over a year? Um, what, what would be comfortable for you? Yeah, I mean, I can add an extra, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month. On Is, top when you say that. a couple hundred, do you mean three or four hundred? Uh, more like two. Two hundred. If I was willing to accept thirty thousand down, fifteen hundred a month rent, and two hundred on top of that for the balance of five, what would you say to me? I I can make that work. What? I can make that work. Oh, okay. I always have a hearing problem when I hear good news. I love to hear it twice. <laughs> okay, I just closed you, right? I got a, I got a preemptive close right in the first phone call, right up front. I know you how much money you have. I know when you need the house. I know we worked that all out up front. 
then we we also need to find out if it's uh, someone selling a home is it free and clear do they have a mortgage why are they selling it uh, are they on the deed on the contract how do they make decisions do they have a spouse or somebody so we need information but we have to ask it in such a way so it's what we call the adult to adult conversation so we're getting you know it's not like me cross-examining you in a courtroom and so as a way to do this with what we call stroking and nurturing and asking questions the right way so that the prospect does more talking than we. That's hard for me to do. I got a grande boca here, you know, you know <laughs> but I want to get the prospect so emotionally involved that they give me the information, they make a commitment or I get out of there. I'm done in one phone call, sometimes two. But I get I, I close people. I learned from my mentor, Max, that I can close people on or get a tentative close or a commitment for another appointment or a contract. I can get it in one phone call. And nobody in our industry is teaching this, Tim. And this right. is the, this is the million dollar skill. I, I agree with you. I mean, yeah, selling is such an important part. But the funny thing, though, Claude, like even for myself, right, as an entrepreneur, and I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. I've always kind of just sort of winged my way through it and, and you know, learn how to do sales from, from, you know, on the street. I've never had official sales training. So I'm thinking a lot of people um, are like me out there just winging it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people went to my, my university. When I graduated law school, I went to a business college. It was called Fake It Until You Make It You. Okay. And a lot of us think sales is about regurgitating, throwing up a lot of facts, giving us reading a script, giving a presentation. And what we do is we get on the phone with people when they are ready to stay on the phone with us and we flap our gums for 30, 45, 60 minutes. And we are, we're that. hoping they give it to us. What's that? I do that sometimes. Yeah, but time is valuable. You become a millionaire when you start thinking about time. Why is Blockbuster Video out of business? Why are, why are people taking Ubers instead of taxis now? It's about time. I don't want to take a, a video back and forth. I don't want to wait around in the rain for a taxi when I know I go on my iPhone and an Uber can be there in three minutes. It's all about time. And, and that's what we, we have to be. A millionaires think about their time. Well, some people can make all the money in the world because they have the sales skills and they have a value of time. I don't want to spend 40, 50, 60 minutes with someone who has, has, have you ever given a presentation to somebody? They were very polite. They were very nice. And then they went to you, Tim, we love you. You're great. And if I had the money, I'd do this deal in a second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. You know, you, you know, what's the, why are we in business, Tim? <laughs> To make money. <laughs> Amen, brother. Today, I'm in business to make money today. I, man, I, I, you know, if I want to save the world or something, I'll join the uh, I'll join the United Nations or the Peace Corps. I want to make money and take care of my family and my responsibilities. I've got to work hard. I've got to work smart. And sales is something people, you know, like you said, they kind of learn it as they go along. And But there's a science to it. Persuasion. Why do people... By, there's a wonderful book by Dr. Childa, uh, Cialdini, um, uh, per, uh, Persuasion in Sales, or uh, The Psychology of Persuasion in Business. Okay, right. There's a lot of books. I've, I'm a student of uh, uh, Dr. Eric Byrne, Games People Play, Transactional Analysis. This man said that people have ego states. They think different things. They do things. They play games. They do things for a reason. If we understand how they think, and we use the right words, we can make, we can qualify people in three minutes or less. This is my famous three minute timer. <laughs> I give this to all my students. Ah. Got this idea from my honeymoon. Um, <laughs> I'll explain that to you later. Um, but <laughs> the, the thing about it is if we get, if we speak to enough people and we qualify the buyer, the seller, the investor and ask the right questions, we, we know who to spend our time with. Who's the person who can take us to the Tim May National Bank today? <laughs> Rather than do free consulting or uh, when I started first in real estate, Tim, I did what all investors do. Oh, I hung up signs. I ran ads, spent too much money on marketing. I got in my car and I drove all over the place. Okay. And I was broke all the time, Tim. 
And I went to my mentor. I said, why? Well, these people are always saying they'll think about it or they'll get back to me and I can't get hold of them. He said, there's no, he said, Claude, this was very important. He said, Claude, there are no bad prospects. They're only shitty salesmen. <laughs> and and he, it was my fault because on the phone, I can qualify people. And today we have Skype, FaceTime. You and I are on FaceTime now. We have all these different technologies where we don't have to get in our car. You and I are, uh, what are we, 2,000 miles apart, and it's like we're in the same room here. It's wonderful. Right. So wow. I'm sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little no. slow today, but I love <laughs> talking about sales because no one else is teaching how to get comfortable, get on the phone, talk to these lovely people out there, and uh, and you're gonna if you get into more what we call adult to adult co positive conversations, instead of being the child who says he wants and is very emotional, or the parent who's critical or nurturing, we just want to have those, those great conversations. Um, you know, and get and we want to get people emotionally involved. Right. I love that. Um, so, so how, you know, how do you get people, especially new students, uh, how do you have them get comfortable with making these calls, right? You're talking about, you know, calling five new people a day. I mm -hmm. mean, it's intimidating for a lot of people. You're right. So, what, what are some of your tips there for, for the listeners on how they can overcome all that anxiety, all that butterfly feelings when it comes to making a call? Practice, practice, and practice. You've got to, you know, we hear basically people ask the same 25 questions. What we have to do is understand why do they ask this question? What is it they really want? So I have study materials for my students first and audio and videos and uh, on YouTube. Uh, youtube.com slash CD mentor. I have 575 videos now wow. on sales, on creative real estate, on marketing. It's all free. It's not commercial. I just keep giving content out there. Sometimes I record my sales calls if I have permission and I put the, I have thousands of people who follow me on YouTube, which, wow. is, kind of, which is part of my marketing plan. But the, to answer your question, it's a great question. The way you get good at this is you practice. So when I mentor people, we every week we do a group call, we do a one-on-one -on -one call, and we role play. You might tell me you have tell, tell me you have to think about. Uh, let's do one here. Tell me um, uh, tell me you you have to think about it and talk to your wife. Yeah, I'll I, mean, I need to talk to my wife first. You Let know, me you know that's I'll, a good idea. I like a man who respects his wife. Hey, honey, <laughs> honey, is it okay to to do a deal with Tim and his lovely family? so that they can stop paying rent and get into a nice home and, and be part of the, and, and make a lot of money. My wife said it's okay to sell you. So you better <laughs> check with your wife and see if it's okay. Can you get back to me at 4.30 today and see if we can do a deal? Okay, yeah, I could yeah. do that. Ask me if, I, ask me, tell me you want to think about it now. Give me that one. Okay, well, I, I'll think about that. You're not allowed to, sir. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I mean, you're not allowed to think about it. I think you're worried about my, when people tell me that, uh, I think they're worried about my feelings because they know how sensitive I am. Okay, I cry. Oh, and <laughs> you know, the thing is, let's, we're here to do what's right for you. When, when, when you say you don't want to, you want to think about it, it really means no, doesn't it? So why don't we say we're done? You're, uh, you're going to keep renting uh, that, um, that room in your mother-in-law's attic for the next 10 years with the 12 cats. And but you're not going to get part of the American dream and get into a house. Can we just agree on that? You're you're going to live in your mother-in-law's attic for the rest of your life. Well, I mean that's not what I want. And 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 see, I'm I'm my personality is I always think things over, right? I gotta like you know make sure that what I'm doing is right before I make that decision. We're but if you can't fire me, sir, I'll fire you. Because when people say that to me, it's really we're done. It's over. I'm fired. And, and why don't we just part as friends? We're never going to do it. Can I ask you a question before I go? Okay. Is this a money issue, really? Because it sounds to me like you got this family, you're living in this small room with those cats and five kids, and your mother-in-law is a, is a tiger, and, and you want to get into your own place. Is this a money issue, or do you just love living that way? Um, it, it, I mean, it... it... Maybe it's a money issue, but like I said, I that I 
you know, I always like to think things over. You're not allowed to think it over, sir. I guess we're done. If it was a money issue, maybe we could discuss it now and I could find out a way to structure some different kind of financing and do a deal. But let's say it's over right now. Listen, you've been a gentleman. You've been a nice man. If I hear from, I'll send you, I'm going to send you a letter of intent, a short offer, basically summarizing what we did. And I'm going to send you a video. And if you get back to me at 3.30 today with a reasonable offer, I'll accept it. But if I never, but if I don't hear from you, have a good life, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> gotcha. Matt, that's pure Max. Max said it's about the sale. Here, this is controversial. Can I be controversial? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> The salesman comes first. I come first. I'm working hard. I work honestly. I want to give people good value and I want to take care of my family. If you're going to try to lie to me, manipulate me or, or something like that, I don't want to waste another minute of my life with you. I get to fire you. What happens to my psychology, my ego when I fire you, when I dismiss you, yeah. even though I'm the salesman? What happens? Yeah, it goes up. It, it goes yeah. up and I can make the next phone call. And Tim's getting off the phone. He's going, what the hell was that? Exactly. Oh, my God. Where was, honey, you don't believe this guy I just talked to. And it's going to stick in your head. And then you're going to get a little video from me. You're going to get a little contract or letter of intent. And you might call me back later. But if you don't call me back, I'm going to take all this information. I'm going to put it into my special guts follow-up system. I'm going to give you a score, 1 through 10. So I'm going to say you're a 4 or 5. And maybe I'll call you back in about three, four, five months. Gotcha. And I have all this information and I'm not a stranger anymore. I'm familiar. Right. I'm crazy Claude. Who's going to call you back? <laughs> yeah. That's if you speak to enough people and you speak the right way while you're having fun on the way to the bank, this is the greatest business in the world. Now, now let me ask you this way. Does this, I mean, it, you know, I'm trying to think from a, a, a listener listening in right now. They might think like, well, Claude sounds aggressive. I am. I mean, is like that's part of the sales? I think part of success is an, uh, uh, you've got to do an, uh, an, a, a, dial, a dialysis, a diagnostic on yourself. You've got to be aware of who you are, what's your place in the universe. And you've got to understand you might, you're going to die someday. Do you want to go out a winner? Do you want to enjoy every day that God gives you? Do you want to stop worrying about money? Or do you want to have regrets someday? Be an old man in a rocking chair in a nursing home with all these damn regrets. I choose success. And if I'm going to make mistakes, I'm going to embarrass myself. So what? You got, this is a, see, I had an epiphany, a revelation. Uh, I call it, uh, it's a special place I finally, I got to. I learned this from Max. It's called I-D-G-A-S-L. Okay, what is I, that? I D G A S L. You, it's it's Disneyland for adults. It's basically I don't give a shit land. I'm in a place where I want to help people. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be assertive. I'm not a bully. I people I love people to say no to me or fire me. It's okay. I even call back people who hang up on me. Go ahead, hang up on me. We're talking. You hang up. Wait. On me. Let me call you back. Ring, ring. Hey, Why? Kim, Claude Diamond here. Did you hang up on me or, or did I say something to offend you? Tell me tell me what it is and I'll apologize. I hung up on you. You just... I'm too much. You're too much. I'm way too much. My wife says the same thing. We've been married 30 years. She says, that you're too much. Let me, take, let me do something here because I want to do business with you and your wife. You guys like pizza? Oh, yes. How about pepperoni, sausage, veggie? <laughs> let me bring over. Let me take you and your wife out to Chuck E. Cheese. No, you don't want to go to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Man, that's the worst. You got to take aspirin before you go there. That's the worst place in the world. Let me take you and your wife out to dinner and, and let's just forget about this. And then if you got some questions, that's fine. When you find out what a good guy I am, maybe we'll do business. And if not, don't worry about it. Dinner's on me. <laughs> you got to fight for it, baby. No one's going to give it I, to I you. Love, I love that. So let me ask you this. Like, you know, I mean, is you have a specific personality. So how do you... You know, um, how does one do sales based on their own personality? And also, how does, like, do you care about what personality the, 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 the other person is, the client is? Do you adjust, you know, personality to person? Can you speak into that, please? Um, that's a great question, by the way. I don't think anyone's ever asked that. You do adjust to the person. You do adjust to their personality. But what we're trying to really do is get to the truth. 
You know, nobody wants to do the truth. Okay, I can shock people with the truth. I even mm -hmm. tell people, do you want me to lie to you or tell you the, tell you the truth, Mr. May? Okay, you're never going to get into a house unless we do a lease purchase first and you don't have enough money. Okay, and your cat just peed on my leg. I don't like that. No, no. But you got to uh, you adjust to the personality of the person. We do something called stroking and nurturing. Okay, I might even go in the opposite direction. Well, Mr. May, why do you want to even sell your house? It's a beautiful home. It's a good school. Why don't you stay there another 10 years? Why are you selling it all of a sudden? You know, and I, I'm going to ask you these intrinsic questions to kind of bring out, get you, you may be the quiet guy, the engineer, the accountant, the little quiet mousy guy, which you're not. Okay. <laughs> Some people are. And what I have to do is show an interest in you and ask you questions that bring out your need. Your, uh, um, here, the million dollar rule is that people make decisions emotionally. They only justify them later on <coughs> academically, logically. We have to ask questions that get that person so emotionally involved, even the little mousy, quiet guy. And he says, well, you know, we can't afford the house anymore. So we get to we break down the walls. We get to the truth. All mm -hmm. I want to do is get to the truth so I can do a deal or follow up on a deal or get out of this deal. There's nothing there. That's all I want. You know, um, neophytes are, you know, beginners who are shy. I was one. I, my hand on the Bible. I was, this, I was the kid who sat in the back of the room, never raised his hand, never made eye contact or anything like that. But you know what? You, you're bro you die broke that way if you're in sales because people want energy. They want enthusiasm. They want sincerity and honesty. People want to fall in love today, and you have to help them get, be, a, be that person. If you're just a person, well, hi, I'm selling something. I'm doing real estate and... Uh, let me read this script here that you're going to, you're going to die broke, man. And life's too short to die broke. So you've got to flip a switch. Part of what to answer your question, part of us is a kind of, we study psychology, uh, transactional analysis from Dr. Byrne. We learn to ask what makes the people tick, but the other side of us is a thespian. That's not a dirty word. It's we're an actor. We take on a role that makes that person comfortable. If that's a sedate, quiet person, maybe I should tone it down a little. Um, I, I, we play the role according to what, not to be manipulative or disingenuous, but we play a role in order to make that person so comfortable that they like us. Guess what happens when people like us, Tim? They do business with yeah, us. Yeah, they do business <laughs> with us. They want to right. do business with us. And, and that's the, and that's the best, and that's the best part. You know, right. if they like us, likability leads to trust. When you have trust, it's a blank check. It's the mm -hmm. best place. Do you ever get into a sale with somebody and you just hit it off? It's symbiotic. It's, you're, you're just having a good time. They like you, you like them. They need what you're selling, the, whatever your buyer, seller, investor, consultant, whatever you do in real estate. And you're just hitting it off with them. Right. Don't you love that? We don't get that enough, do we? No, we don't. And when we make so, a sale, how good does it feel when you make a sale? Oh, yeah, great. Oh, yeah, you, man, I come home. I, honey, we're going out tonight. You know, we're, I'm two feet above the ground. I love that feeling. It's addictive. All right, Claude. So, so, so by now, the listeners are probably in love with you now <laughs> and they like you. Um, you know, if they want to reach out to you, connect with you, learn from you, where would you like to send them? Um, just tell them that Google Claude Diamond. You have the smartest audience in Texas. I know that about your audience. All they got to do, I don't have to give them long web pages and phone numbers. All they got to do is type in Claude Diamond. They'll find me. I have videos on YouTube. I've got tons of stuff on Facebook. I answer my own phone, 970-281-5151. They can type in Claude Diamond on Skype. I'll answer it. I believe in it. You know what's missing in this business? Everybody wants, especially in the teaching, everybody wants money, but nobody wants to be accountable. I, pre I prefer to be accountable to the good people. I get the privilege of teaching. Gotcha. That's awesome. I love that. All right. And then uh, if they want your books. Uh, um, to send me an email. Um, uh, mentor at Mac.com. I'll send them. I got two business novels because uh, most real estate books are boring, aren't they? You know, I wrote novels. One is on sales 
and the other one is about success. They're both about my mentor, Max. Your audience, they send me an email, mentor at Mac. I'll send it to them digitally for free right away. That's my gift to your audience. And you know what I've discovered a long time ago is if I give and I give and I give some more, I have the right to ask. And people, if you give them material, I'm a secret to most people. There's a lot of people doing real estate, doing training and sales in real estate. Why? Nobody woke up this morning and said, gee, let me call up Claude and give him a shitload of money. Um, but they did wake up and said, I had a problem. And if they get enough free information from me and they say, hey, maybe this, maybe this crazy Claude guy has got something here. Maybe I found a straight guy in an unstraight world and he's giving me the shit for free. Hey, honey, he's giving his shit away. Now, I'm giving the books away, and they're fun books. They're really about rags to riches. You know, you're a rags to riches story. You have the most remarkable story ever. You know, you're, you. I checked out on you. You came to this country, didn't speak the language, and here you are, a bastion of success in Texas. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Where's your cowboy hat? <laughs> I need one. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was great, Tim. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank, thank you. It's been a, a phenomenal interview. I like. I appreciate you greatly for all that you share, and I love how you make it so much more fun. And I can see how when you're talking with your clients, these sellers, these buyers, they probably have a lot of fun with you. We have a lot of fun, and you know, you can. The thing is, we want to talk about the things that get them to the go financial goals they want. I don't want to give them busy work or, you know, most people give them a lot of busy work or they raise their expenses so high. I want to keep low overhead, low expense and great sales skills will give you the life you deserve. That's awesome. I love it. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this interview, make sure you rate us, give us feedback, share it with your friends. Go check out Claude, Google him, check out his YouTube, email him, get his books. Um, and with that, happy investing, and we'll see you on the next interview. Take care. Right. Thank you.